Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video tutorial we're going to look at the scientific methods used for collecting data. Now whilst these are called scientific methods, they do also apply to mathematics and engineering. These are standard procedures that can be used when conducting tests of any kind or experiments of any kind. So number one on there is to formulate a hypothesis and we're going to look at this in context later on. But when we formulate a hypothesis, what we're really doing is we're asking a question. And when we ask that question, we're asking a question that we want the answers to. Now that question will depend on the experiment or depend on what we're trying to find out. And as mentioned, we will look at some specific examples of this in a moment. So once we have our question that we want answered, we can run our test. And the purpose of running our test is to generate results or evidence that we can then use to test our hypothesis or to answer the question that we asked in the initial step. Once we have our data, we need to analyse and evaluate that data. And one of the ways that we might do that is using statistical methods. There are other ways of analysing data depending on the hypothesis. So once we've come up with our question and we've generated some results and we've looked at those results in the context of the hypothesis, we can then draw conclusions. Was our hypothesis correct? Do we need to conduct any further studies in order to answer our hypothesis or in order to address the questions that we asked at the start? And then the final step may be to revise the hypothesis, and this will be dependent on the outcome of the test. We may need to run a subsequent test, or we may be required to ask a completely different question. Step three on there is really important, analysing and evaluating data. And the reason for that is because there's different types of data. First of all, we have quantitative data. And the easy way to remember quantitative is it refers to a quantity or a number. And quantitative data tends to be numerical or statistical information, more commonly just referred to as data. But we also have something called qualitative data. And unlike quantitative data, it doesn't have a quantity, instead it has a quality. And qualities can be observed or described. Qualitative data tends to be descriptive or observed information. And we'll take a look at this in a moment. So on the screen here, we have a snippet of data from a UTS test. And what we see in the left-hand column is force. In the second column, we have distance or displacement. And then we have strain and stress. Now, it should be clear from looking at this data that what we have is quantitative data. It has quantities. It has numbers. So what we're looking at there is an example of quantitative data. So let's just relate that quantitative data to the scientific method of collecting data. Recall that step one was to formulate a hypothesis. And in this case, the hypothesis might be something like brass is stronger than steel, or it might be something like steel is less elastic than brass. And these are things that we can test using something called an ultimate tensile test. Once we have our hypothesis or the thing we're trying to prove, we can then use a tensile test machine to generate those results. And we would generate those results for a number of different materials depending on our hypothesis. We would then be on to stage three, which is analyzing and evaluating the data. We could look at the maximum stresses on two samples of material. And from that, we could determine which of the two materials is stronger. We could then draw conclusions. If our original hypothesis had stated that steel was stronger than brass as an example, we could look at our data and draw conclusions on that. And finally, we might need to revise our hypothesis. We might need to introduce new materials, or we might want to conduct a completely different test, such as a fatigue test or something of that nature. The second type of data was our qualitative data, and I'll give you an example of that now. On the screen here are three test pieces that have undergone an ultimate tensile strength test. And when we look at these samples of material, we can also gain some information that isn't quantitative, it doesn't have a number. So for example, I could look at these three test pieces and make predictions around which was more brittle. I could make predictions around which was more suitable for drawing into a wire. And I could make predictions around which of those would be softer and more malleable and easier to shape based on what I'm looking at on the screen there. I could also gather some information about the setup of the machine. Is it set up correctly? Is the test piece actually being loaded in the tensile direction? So there's lots of additional observed data that can be gained by looking at the three test pieces from these tests. So again, if we treat this in isolation, 
I might formulate a hypothesis, such as brass is more brittle than bronze, or steel is more malleable than bronze. I would then conduct the test in order to generate the results. Now when it came to analysing and evaluating the data, I would be looking at those three test pieces against my original hypotheses. And I could then draw conclusions based on what I've seen and based on what I originally predicted in my hypothesis. Once again, I might want to revise my hypothesis. I might want to use different materials or I might want to test something completely different. So next we move on to how we actually represent our data. We can use graphical methods, tabular methods, and we can also use written statements. Let's first of all look at graphical methods. And what we have on the screen here is a stress strain graph for 7030 brass. When we conduct UTS tests, we generate a huge amount of data. And it takes a trained eye to look at that data and establish certain things about that material. However, if we take that data, and we represent it as a stress strain graph as we see on the screen here, then it becomes a lot more straightforward to work out things such as the elastic modulus of the material and the yield strength of the material and the ultimate tensile strength of the material. So using graphs is a very good way to represent information so that it can be easily interpreted. Next we have tables or tabular data. And here we have a table that could be used to analyse the properties of those material samples from the observed data in our qualitative test. So looking at those three samples, we could rank those materials on ductility, malleability, brittleness, toughness and plasticity as an example. Without looking at our quantitative data, however, it would be difficult to make judgments on the elasticity of those materials or the tensile strength of those materials. So the two sets of data, if you like, are complementary. They provide different information about the materials. And the final method of representing data would be as statements. But what we quite often find in things such as questionnaires is what the person who's evaluating the data will try to do is try to quantify or score those statements. However, a statement in itself offers value. If we think of things such as reviews on products, we can give something a score of three out of five, but without those statements, it's difficult to justify why that score was awarded. So statements are also an important form of data. So just to conclude, there is a scientific method for collecting data based around formulating a hypothesis, generating results, analyzing those results and drawing conclusions, and where necessary, revising the hypothesis in order to conduct a supplementary test. We have two different types of data, quantitative data, which is numbers driven, and qualitative data, which is descriptive or observed. And we have three key ways of representing data, graphical, tabular, and written statements. So I hope you found this video useful, and thanks for listening.